Hi everybody, it's the middle of the day, but we have a candle going. I've got like this book haul, you know, a lot of new books that I want to talk to you about. So what happened was that I went to a bookstore in Milwaukee called Downtown Books and I got some books. So let's go through them one by one. This is my, uh, my green tea. First off, we have The Island, a novel by Robert Creeley. Now, if you know me, you know Robert Creeley is not my favorite poet at all. Not my least favorite poet either. Um, I have this book by Robert Creeley, Mirrors. I used to have that that University of California like selected book, you know, just that's all white. Um, I don't know why I got rid of that. I think I just like thought maybe Mirrors is enough for me. And in Mirrors, I'm sure I could find a poem I don't like and a poem I like. Um, this poem, Memory 1930, kind of reminds me of paragraphs I've attempted in The Island. There are continuities, continuities in memory, but useless, dissimilar. My sister's recollection of what happened won't serve me. I sit, intent, fat, the youngest of the suddenly disjunct family, whose father is being then driven in an ambulance across the lawn in the snow to die. It's just like, it's not written super eloquently as far as I can tell, you know? Uh, and it and it kind of has this like um, this undercurrent of like doubt in language or something that kind of uh, induces distrust. And I feel like you see a similar thing in the island. Keep in mind, I have no idea what goes on in this book, but I was just looking at this introductory paragraph. Like rather than an epigraph for this novel published in 1963, we have this um, explanatory paragraph. Um, and it basically says, the, this island is finally not real, however tang tangible it once seemed to me. Um, it like, it, 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 there's this kind of like vaporousness to, and that's a favorite word of mine, as you know, but um, there's a kind of vaporousness to Creeley's stuff that uh, can grate if you're in the wrong mood. And so you might be wondering, why did I pick up the island? Well, I think like just in general, um, I'm, I, as a kind of just thing that I have a morbid fascination with, or like kind of a novels by poets that are, um, that kind of recede into nothing, into, into oblivion, you know, they, they're, they're lost to history. And, um, whenever I was going to these, they become kind of hard to find because they're rare. So like for a book collector like me, for a poet like me, they have obvious, um, you know, obvious appeal because they're novels written by poets. And I love writing poetry, or at least lines of poetry. Um, and uh, and so I'm really interested in what uh, in what novels poets can make. And I know that there are cases like James Schuyler, you know, or Melville even, where it's like they really can make a novel, and they're wonderful, fantastic books that are that are to be read and reread. You know, Ag too. There's my there's the faded spine of my copy of A Death in the Family. Hey, as a side side note, I recently found my real book that Ben got me, so I'm really excited about that. But yeah, so if you're interested in so like uh, po uh, books, novels by poets can be they can feel like um, they're cautionary tales or or uh, examples of how poetry can lead you to the right place. Like in the case of the island, I mean, A Girl in Winter is still I think a treasured novel by some, but the island seems to be totally to have been totally forgotten, except by people who are, you know, on the Wikipedia pages of Black Mountain Poets a lot. The, uh, the, this, this one seems like it could be a cautionary tale of what your poetry should not lead you to do to your novels, and this might be kind of a, in a, at a halfway point between this and, um, and Skylar or something. This is, you don't, people aren't on, you know, it doesn't work like that, people aren't just on a continuum, but, you know, just to get you, um, just to try to explain my fascination with these books, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using some metaphors and stuff, I guess, but, um, and kind of disfiguring my thought in that way. But um, basically, when I was at Downtown Books, I thought I'd look for these because these are rare. And I, every time I'm at a new bookstore, you kind of like, you know how you had kind of scan for the thing that was rare and that you couldn't find elsewhere? Well, I happened to find Phil, a Philip Larkin novel and a Robert Creeley novel there. So I, I bought them both. Um, even though I have like, you know, you know, I have my doubts, I have to investigate. And so, um, I am excited to have found these. Yeah. And mirrors, you know, I'm going to put mirrors on the side table. Um, a girl in winter is Tusk Overlook. And then this is like an old Scribner paperback. This is a reprint suggesting that it's, um, that it's, you know, held in esteem for a while. 
It's also got a really beautiful cover. This illustration actually is really rewarding just like staring at it for a while. It's really mysterious and, and sinister and, and, and beautiful. I like the Tusk Overlook. People, booktubers will love, um, will know Tusk Overlook because they do um, Joseph McElroy um, reprints and those are favorites. Jill is I think the one I was hoping to find, but I found A Girl in Winter. I'm not sure which one came first, but this one has lots of, you know, blurbs on the back. Joyce Carol Oates liked it. The Island is just, you know, it's like a buzz book by somebody who was like a buzz band in 1963. And nobody wants to be a buzz band, you know? You want to organically grow that following by kind of, you know, doing a, things on your own terms for a long enough time that people catch on, you know? Um, there's been a lot of Larkin on the channel lately, as you all will know. Um, I did a, I did a, I've had lots of these like book haul videos that I think have been sort of, um, well now I've lost my train of thought. Another sip of green tea. Yeah, I've been doing these book haul videos because, um, they're just like candy to the booktube viewer. And I just feel like it would be kind of cheap to deny you the pleasures of like all these books coming in. Um, like I get to enjoy it, but you don't like, I like to share my books with you. So for all of those who didn't see that other video, this is that like Larkin, um, array that I now am the privileged owner of. Larkin was getting some good mentions in the essay, uh, from Madness, Rack and Honey that Amelia and I were reading last night. You know, so Larkin's been on the brain. There was a verse poet uh, whose books were widely available at Downtown Books. And I thought about getting one of her books, but I didn't do it because things were getting expensive with all of these, like, poets novels that were cropping up for me to to purchase. Um, and that's Wendy Cope. If you, if any viewer of this um, video really likes Wendy Cope, um, please tell me which book of hers I should start with, because um, they're at least available at Downtown Books, and I will be going back there soon. So that's the deal with these with these novels, A Girl in Winter and The Island. So next we have like, this is kind of another class of thing I was looking to get there, which was just like books of poems that would contain poems by people I'd never heard of before. And so I came up with this set of three. Now I'm really, um, I'm trying to read more rhyming poetry because I love it. It's really inspiring. Um, I like all kinds of rhyming poetry. Um, I also, as you know, I love these like penguin books of X, Y, Z. Um, this is kind of a, a kind of penguin book of X, Y, Z that I don't really have that many of. Maybe the book of meta metaphysical verse that I have is uh, metaphysical poets is, uh, is in this style. But anyway, kind of gloomy restoration vibe here. Um, and then here we have the Penguin Book of Ballads. We have this lovely kind of heroic landscape. And then this just, I opened it and it was, it had so much beautiful stuff in it. This book of Welsh verse. Um, it's published by Poetry Wales Press. How cool is that? Um, and of course, I haven't heard of any of these people, but I do know that like Welsh poetry was important to Gerard Manley Hopkins, who's one of my favorite poets. So I'm really excited to look into this one. You've got stuff from all the way from the, from like approximately the sixth century all the way up to present day, is it? We, we got present day here? Yeah, we got um, people born in, um, in uh, 1946. So, uh, and with poems like Goggy. Yeah, this stuff to me just seems so beautiful. I really wanna like kind of just, um, you know, turn my phone off and go, and go somewhere and kind of sink into this book of Welsh verse. Um, the Restoration Verse book has some, some uh, cool lewd poems in it. Um, the book of ballads had just great like lyric ideas in it and great like uh, stanzas. It kind of reminds me of, I've been really liking my eclectic reader um, for kind of lifting lyrics and lifting um, rhyme schemes and stuff. Here's that book, M McGuffey's Second Eclectic Reader Revised Edition. Um, I've been really liking this book for finding, for finding cool poems and uh, you know, good little fires can, flies can see more than we, so how bright their eyes must be. Little fly, ope your eye, spiders are nearby. For a secret I can tell, spiders never use flies well. Then away, do not stay, little fly, good day. So you got lots of gold in McGuffey's second eclectic reader. 
Here is the mention of uh, of Larkin in I Remember, I Remember by uh, Mary Rufles, in Mary Rufley's uh, Rep Madness, uh, Rack and Honey. I remember I recognized the allusion to Thomas Hood's I Remember, I Remember when I read Philip Larkin's version of I Remember, I Remember. Larkin's poem is also called I Remember, I Remember, and in it his train happens to stop in Coventry, and he happens to remember he was born there. The last line of the poem is, nothing like something happens anywhere. And um, let's look at, you know, what kind of poets the, these bo these anthologies have. This has a bunch of Welsh people I've never heard of, but like, what does the Penguin Book of Restoration verse have? Of course, I've heard of Milton and I've heard of Marvell, but a lot of these other people I don't really know. It seems like Charles Cotton is pretty good. Um, Flatman. Uh, Marvell, a lot of Dryden. I feel like Dryden is kind of a, a a used bookstore staple because I think Dryden used to be way huger than he is now. Um, Thomas Treherne, I've heard of. So I've heard of um of the last verses in the book. That reminds me of the last poem, and um, I like I like books of poetry where the last poem in the book uh, references being the last poem in the book. I'm specifically referring to the last poem in this book. Last thing in the book, I trembled and shook. A half hour down and a half hour due. Sapphire, sapphire, I don't know who. And when will I ever do that again? I feel like I read, I, I just can't read Madrid, like, you know, without being, I feel like I'm too sappy or something. So here we have some people who are pretty much, uh, you know, you've heard of. And then the Penguin Book of Ballads, I think, might be a little more obscure in terms of who's in it. Yeah, I think it's um, more like anonymous stuff. Farewell the raging sea, I must die, I must die. Farewell the raging sea, I must die. Farewell the raging main to Turkey, France, and Spain. I ne'er shall see you again, I must die. I mean, there's amazing fodder in here for your, for your poems, poets. And look at that cover again, really beautiful. So here you have two penguin books of verse, basically. And Welsh verse. And so this is, these were um, calculated, I, I got these calculating that they would be, you know, additions to my poetry collection that would be, you know, that would give something that isn't already there, especially the ballads and the Welsh verse. And then this is the one I'm really excited to talk about. So we have Denise Levertov's Tesserae, Memories and Suppositions. You can see there's, there are kind of Tesserae on the cover here. It has this tear and the, that, that was there when I got it. It's got a very faded spine. It's a New Directions hardcover from the mid-90s, from 1994. It has a list of her publications on the back. And it's about, you know, 150 pages long. And I've read the first few bits. I'm at Cordova right now. The, um, the jacket copy lets you know that they're small individual pieces of glass or stone that make up a mosaic. This particular book is no longer property of Spokane Public Library. But I really like this, like... It doesn't, none of the segments linger on too long, and they don't, they, they, sh they, they depict myster mysterious episodes in the lives of um, Denise, her parents, their parents. Um, it has a, sen a sense of what ancestry was getting up to, and it tells interesting stories, but it doesn't be belabor them too much. And this first episode, The Sack Full of Wings, really won me over, because it's just like, it's both a beautiful image, a, a really a kind of a core mystery from Denise Levertov's childhood memories, and then also like a coincidence. It has all of these kind of nice little um, chance good things coming together um, to make like a, a, a memoir, a, like a, a memoiristic anecdote that that you can really kind of relate to and um, and inhabit. And it really just um, it sets you thinking, and it's about the length of a poem. But I do think that Tesserae, I'm, I'm keeping this one by the bed uh, lately, and um, I'm going to read this one more, and I think it will, I'll enjoy it deeply, it'll probably inspire um, some writing, and it will inspire me to go back and read Levertov with that much more relish. Um, and so that's, those are the books I got, and um, thanks for uh, taking a look, and happy reading today, all. Bye-bye.